Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Metal Foes Yang Zing deck, or at least a version of it. Now, this deck has gotten a couple of little bit of successes on the regional circuit, as well as like the YCS circuit. I think one of them topped YCS Anaheim or something like that. Uh, but personally, I've kind of let my own knowledge of this deck fall to the wayside, and I haven't really been too like enthusiastic about playing it, because I think the deck has a lot of very key flaws that are just something that I don't know how to address. And... I don't think the Speedroid engine is necessarily the answer. I see a lot of people running the Speedroid engine in the deck, and I personally don't think that that's, uh, that's necessarily that good because it introduces more bricks into the situation. It's another card in your hand that doesn't necessarily like generate you towards your uh, your combo pieces and things like that. But uh, but essentially, uh, this, this is just a deck list that I had lying around for uh, when the new support came out. Haven't done a lot of testing with the deck, but I do still, you know, know some of the basis of how the deck functions. And I figured I'd do some testing with the deck because, for some reason, a lot of you guys just keep messaging me through like Facebook or commenting on videos like, "When will you do Metal Foes Yang Zing? Do you think it's competitively viable?" I mean, I used to think it was competitively viable, but I've basically been let down a lot by this deck um, in terms of testing it when the new support came out. And ultimately, I think this deck is probably one of the most fun get lucky to win decks that exists out there because it definitely has a lot of consistency problems and it's definitely one of those decks that sucks unless you get lucky and it's also a deck that even with the speedroid engine in it is very like abysmal at going second its capacity for going second is very very like very unfortunate and underwhelming <laughs> but anyway that's enough talking about this right now let's uh Let's just jump straight into the first of the five games and just like see how it goes. Hopefully I get to win rock, paper, scissors because then I don't just guaranteed lose the match. But let's just see how this goes. Let's jump into the first game. So going into the first game, I lose rock, paper, scissors, which means my chances of winning this match are very, very, very small. Uh, that's an unfortunate bit of news, but that's how this deck works. It's basically you win the die roll and you probably win the match as long as you don't brick one of the games that you're going first. And I mean, this deck is very, very like good at doing the things that it's meant to do, even with low amounts of cards, so you could still pump out boards with suboptimal hands that yield two to three negations. That can actually be very crippling, but ultimately it's just it's a problem. So, as you see here, my opponent just opens Ultimae and Crystal Wing, and it's literally all that he needs. Uh, there's nothing else, he just needs the one bit of disruption to stop the Jiaotu, and then that means the game plan is over. Like, <laughs> just summon the Jiaotu and I try to path my way into something and there's nothing I can do to win the game and I'm just gonna lose next turn, so I just scoop and say let's go to the next one. Now, next game, I get to go first and I open with the combo, I open with a Metal Foe plus a Yang Zing plus two cards in hand that are Yang Zing cards. Now, unfortunately, I drew the Symphraxi, which is the card you pretty much want to go to summon off of your Jiaotu so that it allows you to Pendulum summon it. So I have to do a little bit of improvisation before anything else happens, and that is to you know use Arch Phoenix Centric to pop my combination to get an extra card in like circulation, and then using the Arch Phoenix Centric itself as the non-tuner for my Denglong, thus allowing the Zephraxia I brought back off Boxia be the material with the Denglong, the synchro material with Denglong to be the second Boxia and actually go forward. Now I accidentally used uh, Beon. I forgot that the very first card I summoned this turn was Beyond. I thought I summoned a different one, and so I thought I was going to be able to float again into another card and actually make, like, Herald of the Arc Light just straight away, but, or make, like, something like an Omega, but unfortunately, it, like, that, I just forgot that I had used Beyond, so I just basically threw the card away, but it didn't really matter, end up mattering, because I still ended up generating four negations because of the fact that I had double uh, nine pillars, as well as I was able to make Herald of the Arc Light on my opponent's turn by nine pillars and then floating into my Chi Win and my Beyond making Herald of the Arclight. Um, but I saved the last Herald of the Arclight after negating with Titanic Galaxy with Herald of the Arclight and negating with one nine pillar just because I knew that there was the potential for Solemn Strikes and Warnings in his list because he plays Ariadne. So I wanted to save one of those cards and I saved it and it ended up you know coming in clutch to where he just scoops to the fact that he gets his entire Solemn Strike on my Pendulum Summon negated, so I'm able to just push through the game. Now, going into the third game, he starts, he starts with his Klee engine this time now. He's playing a very, very, very heavily OCG inspired build from back before Zodiacs were announced and before they came to the OCG, and he's playing the Klee engine, he's playing the Ariadne Counter Trap engine, and he's playing Gofu and the Ultimaya engine, all in the same deck. Like, he's playing probably the Metal Foes deck with the highest amount of ceiling for like different engines to work with the Metal Foes cards than I've ever seen. Like, 
this this deck is insane. And like one game he'll open Cleese, the other game will open like Ultimaya, the other game he'll open with counter traps. But as you see, he has two forms of negation and defensive line in that game with Alkahis and Cyber Dragon Infinity. And again, the Jiao Two just gets negated. There's nothing you can do about it. But going into the next game, I open with a Jiao Two play with a lot of Yang Zing cards, but I don't have any Metal Foe scales, and so I'm like, all right, how am I gonna make this work? I know that there's a way to generate a lot of negates out of this. I'm just not sure how many, so I just start you know, like structuring my plays in the way that I think is the most optimal, using Denglong to search my Zephraxi and putting it in the scale with my Zephyr Niu in order to pendulum summon the other two Yang Zings out of my hand to potentially just keep going to you know pendulum summon the Zephyr Niu for my extra deck and the Swanee for my hand. And I do end up ending with three negates. I'm like, that ended up a lot better than I ever thought it could with a Herald of the Arclight with a Titanic Galaxy and a live nine pillars. That just seemed better than it ever could have ended for me, um, considering all the things that actually went into it. And, you know, just being able to summon the Chi Win back was a huge asset there as well, being able to uh, make that play meldable. But going into the next turn, I still have a nine pillars down, and so I use it, popping the Zephyr Niu out of my scale when he tries to warning my Denglong, and I use you know, the Denglong to search my BN, which allows me to summon my Boxia, and I'm able to just keep going and push through his uh, through all of his cards, basically negating his play during his turn, and then being able to just go off, just be able to do so many different things, being able to float with my Chi Win and my Swanee at the same time off the Metal Foes card that I added off combination, and just doing all these things, comboing into Chamber Rider, and I'm able to make an Omega here, and I just didn't use Omega's effect to banish the card out of hand, even though I could have, but I've definitely got enough damage on board for game after spinning his two cards with Boxia, having the Titanic Galaxy, and the Chamber Rider gets to attack, you know, twice, and then the Omega gets to attack, so it's very, very much so game. But going into the last game of this match, I'm going second, because, I mean, going first, the person who's going first has won the game in this match, that's how it works. When you're playing with the Metal Foes Yang Zing deck, if you go second, good luck. Have fun, because you're probably not going to have fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Find some fun somewhere else. But so he gets open with an Ultimaya play, setting a card that I don't know what it is, and getting Crystal Wing out. Now, my hand's not that great, uh, but it is the combo. It's just it's not great for dealing with a Crystal Wing and going up against a Crystal Wing, as well as an unknown back row. But so I pop the card, I summon Chi Win, and I'm like, alright, if I can successfully Pendulum Summon, then I can make Ding Long, and that'll get negated. I'll summon another card out of my deck because Ding Long will have gone to the graveyard, and then I will be able to, uh, I'll be able to, you know, potentially combo up and deal with his board. But unfortunately, the card is a strike, and so my Pendulum Summon of my three Yang Zing cards gets negated, and basically the game is just over and done with. At this point, this is just him getting able, being able to do anything he wants to try and OTK me, because it doesn't really matter if he doesn't OTK me because I'm going to just be like having my floaters negated and stuff like that. There's nothing much I'm going to be able to do in the face of this Crystal Wing, but he's capable of Tribute Summoning for a Monolith for the last bit of, little bit of damage that he needs for game here. And ultimately, it's just... It's... It's just a problem. This Yang Zing deck is... is such a problem with going second. It's got such a problem going second, and like I said, the Speedroids don't really address this problem, and they don't really fix it. And, like, the only thing that really fixes it is cards like Kaijus and stuff like that, but again, that's just more non-combo cards. I can understand the allure of playing the Speedroid cards, because the Speedroids, at the end of the day, you can Special Terra Top, add Red-Eyed Dice, Normal Summon it, make Terra Top a 4, and make Ding Long. But that's not really that optimal, I don't think. Like, it's, it's not really the best way to facilitate starting your play string moving, and it's certainly not another combo card. So that's the biggest problem I have with this deck. I don't know if I'm going to play this deck anymore. I just wanted to show you guys like the basic of most basic builds that I had been testing and like just sort of voice some of my concerns I have with this deck. Like, and people wanted me to play it, so I figured I kind of was in like it, it was overdue to be played on the channel with its current support. But ultimately, I don't think the deck is ultimately nearly as good as I was hoping that it would be. And it's just got too many flaws for the deck to have any sort of lasting competitive success I don't think but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and if you like the video definitely be sure to like and subscribe like the video and subscribe to my content it helps me out a ton and help the channel and the community around it grow like it just helps things grow helps things just get better as time goes on at least that's the uh, idea at least check out the links on screen to see more videos I've done and you may just find something else that also interests you but as I already said thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys Take care. Again, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next video.